Guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, today's topic for our video, we're going to touch on a little bit of uh, modern golf ball evolution. Yes. Um, we're not going to dig too far back into, uh, you know, the feathers and gutter no. perches and all that sort of stuff. We're going to dig back uh, more into our sort of recent times, sort of back to the, the tightest uh, wound golf balls right. of the early 90s. 90s. So some of our uh, viewers were really kind and, and sent us in and dropped us in some, some golf balls that they had lying around from from you know those those sort of times which is really cool uh, which was awesome for us to do that we've been yep. doing a lot of ball testing recently obviously yes. testing today's golf balls against one another but we thought it'd be pretty cool to go okay how far has the golf ball come in the last 20 years yeah so, so this uh, guy is from 1994 yeah the the titleist professional, professional was launched in, in 1994 uh, it was a follow-on from the, the Tour Bellata golf ball, which was launched the previous year, 93, which was kind of at the time the most played golf ball in the professional tours. Right. Liquid core, wound in, inner, and obviously um, the urethane cover that came with the, the professional. Right. So this was the first ball that had a urethane cover? Yep. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Yep. So it lasted a little <laughs> bit longer than the Tour Bellata. Okay. That was the one, you know, it was, was renowned for if you kind of mishit it, especially a little bit thin. Just you leave that big smile on it and uh, <laughs> you have to toss it. So. Right. And we, we all saw a bunch of those. So, you know, follow on in, in evolution of the golf ball to the year 2000, Titleist make the, the Pro V1, um, which was a big, big change. Obviously, solid mm. core uh, versus the, the kind of softer um, wound core. The, go the golf industry had to change forever at that point. I was going to say, I mean, that was, that, was the, that was the change. I mean, people think it was the driver, mm. the ball. Yeah. Was what was what changed the whole thing. I can see that for sure. Yeah, I mean, having hit both of them just now, it's like feels like you're playing a different game. Almost. We we burst out laughing. It's the crazy. first shot you hit with the yeah. professional. The sound we, of it was the sound of it, and and the flight was very different. And yeah. it was kind of like to me when you hit it, it looked like you were hitting a restricted golf ball. Yes, it did. It looked like a limited flight. Something golf ball. let's let's knock back ten percent mm. in order to not hit out the back of the range. It's a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. a lot like that. Um, so, you know, on that point of the golf ball. I think I've not heard this talked about enough. Maybe it has been. I've just not seen it. For me, the the way the the pyramid of influence in golf goes from the ball influences the head, mm -hmm. the head influences the shaft, mm. and and they all work off of that. So whatever the ball is doing, the guy, the head manufacturers have to evolve accordingly. Right. Whatever the whatever the then the result is off of that, the shaft manufacturers have okay. to. You know, act accordingly. Yep. You know, if we think back to a few years ago when TaylorMade launched SLDR, yep. the golf ball all of a sudden spun way less. We all remember loft up, 17 launch, 1700 spin, all that stuff. Yeah. Worked for some people, didn't work for most. Um, off of the back of that, we saw all the shaft manufacturers come out with a, a much more tip active uh, shaft. Yeah, to try to kick the spin back. Just up. to try and create some dynamic loft and try and get some flight because people were going, oh, that's great. You know, I'll try this SLDR. They'll plug in their, at the time, it was, you know, some of the popular shafts might have been, you know, Fujikura Matori 6.2 tour spec, mm -hmm. Matrix Black Tie, very tip stiff shafts. They'd put that in SLDR from the driver the previous year and the ball was just kind of yeah, falling out the sky. Keep it in, the, in the air. Everyone had to then go a little bit more tips off. So mm. that's the kind of, you know, the pyramid of influence on ball flight is to, is to how these, that's the influence the golf ball has. And it's, for me, it's at the top. You know, yeah. the golf ball dictating basically what the other, what has to happen around it. Yeah, I think that's, I've learned that in the last couple of months. It's amazing how much difference, mm -hmm. even the modern balls between <clears throat> different models or, or different uh, styles of ball, like between like a distance yeah. ball or a spin ball. And then you go back 20 Definitely. years and you're really starting to talk something crazy. Honestly, Matty, in the last couple of weeks since we've been doing this mm. and, you know, we've learned more about golf balls in the last month than then so even we, we knew before that which yeah. is significant. I don't mind saying that. Of course, yeah. There's certain times and fits the last week where we've had customers in, and um, you know we've seen their spin profile too low. Mm -hmm. So you know certain wedges, whether it be gap or sand wedge. I had a customer this week couldn't spin their gap wedge um, any more than sort of 6,500. Oh really? Because they deal off it quite a lot. Yep. So that's for some people as a seven iron. It is, yeah. Right. So. You know, I said to him, okay, let's let's not look too much. You know, we're trying Volkey and Ping and Cleveland wedges. And nothing. The wedge wasn't making a difference. Didn't matter what head we we uh, used. I gave him a Chrome Soft. Mm. His spin went from 6,500 to 8,500. Really? With the ball change, exact same heads. Okay, wow. then it's game on. Yeah. So all of a sudden he starts gaining control and that sort of stuff. But you know, this is just 
you know, more power to what we preach and the say, power yeah. of the golf ball. Yeah. You know, we're always talking and, and it's more wedge specific than anything. For sure. Yeah. 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 So, um, so on to today's test, we had Matty do the usual driver, seven, seven iron, iron, 58 degree wedge. That's yeah. a usual, usual running order. So let's run through the results. Mm -hmm. So kind of as expected, ball speed was a little bit quicker off the, uh, off the Pro V1X. Mm -hmm. Couple of, yeah, two miles an hour. Launch was a little bit higher. Yep. We would expect that, a little bit of a firmer, uh, firmer sort of core. Yep. Um, and the spin rate was very similar. It was just a couple hundred RPMs less with Pro V1X. Two, literally, two, literally 200 less. Yeah. I yeah. was expecting to see this guy just kind of going mm -hmm. crazy, 1400 or 14,000 spin. It just I know. never. And I tried to spin a, yeah. a few as hard as I could. Yeah. Nothing. It just, wouldn't, just it wouldn't was go very over. very similar. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that speaks a lot to the technology, the evolution of the golf ball that, you know, the manufacturers have managed to create this mm. ball that goes so far, but it's not at the sacrifice of spin control. No, no definitely not. It really isn't. Yeah. So, uh, so that was really interesting. Yeah, basically the same spin profile, marginally less uh, launch, but you could also argue the launch is less because the velocity is less. For sure. The ball speed, I mean, I had a very hard time mm -hmm. getting, um, I mean, it's showing only a couple yards difference, but yeah, yeah. on average, uh, if you went out on the golf course, I think you'd find yourself leaving this guy short all right. the time because it just doesn't have the same ball speed. Mm -hmm. So we swung a little faster. Yeah, with, you, with, I was just checking that there. Yeah. Yeah, I, and that was probably me trying to get it to go the same distance yep. because it just wouldn't come off with the mm -hmm. same speed. 100 yards is your, your yardage on your 58. Yeah. So. Um, Interesting okay. stuff cool. there, yeah. So into the seven iron, and this was the one we, we hit and then we, we both burst out yeah, laughing because of the sound. Um, so yeah, bit of a bit of a difference now in ball speed, four miles an four hour. Four miles an hour is a lot, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's quite a lot. Again, lower launch angle, we, we understand why that is. And now we're starting to see the spin spike up a little bit. Yeah. So a 400 RPM difference. Um, so less ball speed, more spin. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're starting to shorten up a little bit with the, pro, uh, the professional. For sure. There was nothing I could do to fly the professional more than 170. So the carry being 170, I mean, we ignored the total because it was landing in the fairway. Sure. It gives it a Roll firm it out bounce. A bit, yeah. But I could not fly this guy more than 170, no matter what I did. And the Pro V1X would just comfortably fly, you know, just a little short of the pin and roll up to it. Okay, okay cool. The big dog. This was some serious difference. Yeah, so we're starting to see the, the stretch uh, in ball speed really mm -hmm. start to occur now. So now six miles an hour difference. Um, obviously softer softer ball when the professional, too much compression for right. you, ball not rebounding fast enough. Gotcha. Uh, we lose a lot, of, uh, a lot of ball speed from that. And what do we have there? What, seven, basically 700 RPMs of difference. Yes, yeah. quite a lot more yeah. spin. Yeah, quite a lot more spin. Probably more than we would be able to make with just about any, maybe that's like an AVX versus Pro V1 kind of difference mm -hmm. almost, probably even a little bit more, Yeah. but pretty substantial and lower launch. Yeah. Like a, a lot of those shots were nine and a half mm -hmm. degree launch Yeah. with the professionals. So yeah, just a, a lower flying ball flew 21 yards shorter. 21. So if we, time that, that's it. it out there, wouldn't you? If we, uh, if we sort of piece that together on, on any given hole, so yes. say we're hitting in that, you know, we're hitting in a driver and a seven arm. <clears throat> we're 29 yards yeah, different. In the air. In the, yeah, 20 of carry, just of carry distance. Yeah. 20 on any given hole, we've lost eight, eight yards with the seven arm. We've lost 21 with the, the driver. 29 yards matters to everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, at any level. I mean, at any level. I think the proponents at the USGA, especially of dialing the, the ball back, they see that difference more the faster your swing speed yeah, gets. Yeah. But everyone's losing a bunch of distance wow. when they were using this golf ball. Yeah. So the fact that you can take this ball out and hit it, I mean, whatever that percentage is, at least 10, 15% further, mm -hmm. you have a lot more fun hitting two clubs Way less more into, the, into the green 100%. than you would with this guy. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. You know, all, all those conversations that are going on right now that you know, the, the golf ball is, is out of control and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. There's not enough people that it's out of control for. I, I, I think it's all crap, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like 0.0001% of golfers. It's too, too long for them. Everyone else is having a better time playing golf with a Pro V1X yep. than they would with this guy. If the PGA Tour really care that much, because they're, I mean, the, the people that matter mm. uh, in the game of golf are the members of golf of clubs. Yeah. Worldwide. Public golf players and everyone else. Absolutely. 
the PJ Tour, if they want to do their own thing, go do your go own thing. It. But, you know, leave the golf ball alone mm. for the amateur golfer. Totally. Agree. Leave it alone. It, it performs fantastic. It's fast, it spins a ton. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different versions out there for people to dial in their feeling preferences. Yep. It is exactly where it should be and performing how it should be. Totally agree. Yep. So I know the one question we will get that we won't be able to answer today is, does this spin more offline or how does it fly in mm -hmm. the wind? Um, we'd have to save that for like an aerodynamics test with well, that's an out, That's an outdoor, yeah. an outdoor test. Because we did get sure. a couple of questions <clears throat> saying, you know, does GC quad factor in that? And the mm -hmm. answer is no, it just doesn't. It's capturing the first little bit yeah. of the flight. One interesting thing that we actually started our day with as well, we started by measuring the yeah, that was cool. uh, measuring the outside diameter. So you use your calipers here. We had our digital calipers out. So uh, you know, a bunch of friends of mine when I posted on Instagram last week or the weekend. Um, You'll be able to we, see yeah, on camera, but well, it may, yeah, it's maybe. probably maybe hard to detect, but professional and, and obviously Pro V One X. Yeah. A lot of people said uh, to me, you know, measure the measure the size of the professional because they did have a tendency to shrink. Yep. So you know, we, we know that the modern day golf ball is an, is 1.68 inches in size. That's right. what the modern golf ball is. The dimensions of it. So we, we got our digital calipers out, but we, we eyeballed it first, didn't we? We went, oh yeah, there there is a bit of a difference. This looks smaller. The professional it, looks, it looks smaller. It looks quite to me. a bit smaller. It really does. Yeah. Two. Two one hundredths of a second. So nothing. Of a second. Of, a, of, of, a, an, of an inch. Of an inch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically nothing. Yeah. So nothing. Something, something of an optical illusion, maybe with the color of it, or it has it has went a little yellow, it's a little like dingy. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and the the Bellata balls, actually, interestingly enough, uh, I'm going to grab one. Yeah. yeah. Um, they those golf balls went um, much much darker. So well, they're discolored we, further. We should be able to show that on on sort of camera. Oh yeah, that's way. Um, this is a this is the professional. Yeah, here. I mean we've got a lot of light shining on us here, so we might not see it, but yeah. we'll take some pictures for sure and we'll we'll post those. But that looks like it's been sitting in a pond yeah, for a year. Yeah, it does. It does. It might have been. It might have been. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting sure. stuff. Yeah, I mean, just just shows us how far we've come. Twenty four years of technology and evolution. Mm. You know, Titleist continues to, to kind of push uh, every single year as other companies do. But right. you know, I think Titleist have been at the driving force uh, of being proactive about the evolution of the golf ball. Maybe yep. some of the other companies have been reactive about the yeah. uh, evolution of the golf ball. That's fine. You know, Titleist have, have given them that advantage that, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it on every single year. That's their burden to carry. True. And, um, you know, they deserve their spot at the top of the tree in golf ball sales. Absolutely. There's a lot of other golf balls, as we always say, out there at different price points, but, you know, it's... Uh, Still the number one ball and golf for a Yeah, reason. certainly nothing has had more influence on design over the years no. than this company. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Very cool. Cool. Guys, I um, hope you enjoyed this. Is this a little fun video, a little trip down memory lane um, with the evolution of the golf ball yeah. and some of our thoughts on it. It's a really interesting test. 29 yards is, is very important to anyone. So um, hopefully, hopefully this is kind of shed a little bit yeah. of light as to maybe why as the golfer who was in their kind of prime, maybe in, you know, in the mid nineties, they've really been able to maintain their distance. There hasn't been a true. drop off maybe as the, the swing speed has decreased over the years. Well, you know, you're seeing some prime reasons why that would be the golf ball's evolution has been significant. Yeah, so, Champions Tour's uh, players can still hit yeah, it out there pretty good. Absolutely. And they, they grew up playing, well not yeah. grew up, but they played their prime with this ball. That's it, those, yeah. those guys are still playing some, some good length golf courses, you totally. know, yeah. around 7,000 yards and they can still cope with that and shoot some great scores. So Very true. That's uh, interesting stuff. Awesome. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, leave your comments below as, as always. Um, you know, we'll get back to as many of them as we can and we'll see you again soon.